There we go. Hello. So hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the stream. So this stream is a little bit different than the ones that I've done in the past. Primarily. Uh, we're actually streaming on YouTube today. We're not actually streaming on Twitch. Just to kind of, you know, shake things up a little bit. Uh, and we'll, we'll kind of, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Even though we are streaming late at night, uh, currently 10, where I am. Uh, it's a late night stream. We're going to be playing at Bulgaria. Uh, they and Serbia have had a update recently. And I, th I know that Bulgaria, they can go and form their own version of Yugoslavia. Which I thought was very weird and interesting. So we're going to be playing Bulgaria and trying to form Yugoslavia. Seems good to me. Let's see how it goes. Um, we do know, if you remember back, I think it was in the Haiti playthrough. We do know that um, Serbia can start the war uh, in the Balkans way earlier than they used to. I think they can do it in, I think, 1936 now. But I think before it was at least like June of 37. So we need to be a little bit more weary of that. Um, in order for us to form the uh, Yugoslavia as Bulgaria, I do know that you cannot accept German nor Austrian help. I think other than that, there's not really any major requirements there. We also actually win the war against Serbia and Romania and Greece and maybe also the Ottomans, depending on how things actually go. Get our army and navy experience. Sounds great. You were already started. You're actually already two days into this. How very strange that you start two days into this. A real dictatorship. Got a project, a reform plan. I guess you could theoretically cancel this and do another focus, but I don't really know if that's really necessary. I, I, I think this is fine. I think this is fine. Uh, we currently have 21 units. We'll put most of them on the Serbian front. We'll put 11 on the Bulgarian or on the Romanian front. That would be easier probably to make these into separate armies. Some onto this front, and then I guess we'll put let's let's say you four. Congratulations, you're now on the Greek front. Just assign some uh, generals to all of these armies. And we're just going to kind of hope that the Ottomans don't do anything bad against us. Fingers crossed. Um, we have 18 factories, which is fine. It's not, it's not the worst. But because we do know the war's going to be happening a little bit early, I will be going with support weapons right away, followed by research speed, followed by production efficiency cap. We currently have a camp of factories free, but of course this is not going to last for too long. Probably within, I would say, about a month. We'll build the factories that we can in Sofia, at least before Black Monday actually hits. We have support equipment, we're not actually using support equipment, so we're going to cancel that. Throw that into more rifles for right now. Ah. No, put that into bombers. Yeah, that seems okay. We don't have a lot of uh, supplies right now. Let's go one factory and st uh, get some steel from the United States. Dockyards, I guess? We only have 32 convoys. We'll go for some convoys now as well. But I, I feel like... We're also missing guns for this, huh? Because we're occupying a lot of enemy territory. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. The Wavering of San Stefan's Dream. Bulgaria emerged from the Vild Krieg as one of the victors and was awarded with all the lands that they won in the Balkans. Thus, the unification of Greater Bulgaria, which was the key goal of Bulgarian foreign policy ever since the Treaty of San Stefano in 1878. However, the unification of Greater Bulgaria was the beginning of further troubles. Occupation of new territories was costly, and the country fell into severe debt. The political scene fractured. The early 1920s saw a political dance between Varl's Radoslav's National Liberals and numerous opposition parties, uh, such as the Democrats, Moderate Agrarians, and Broad Socialists. Though it was a continuation of the uh, Partisan Sivo period from before the Vilde Krieg, additional parties of Srebrenica were no longer certain of victory. In 1925, the British and Serbian revolutions emboldened local agrarians and socialists in the Subrane. Response, Crown Prince Boris encouraged his aging father to put forward General Konstantin Gorgiev, his favorite new prime minister. Gorgiev imports martial law, restricted anti ruleist parties, and passed the State Protection Act, an act which gave the government authoritarian powers to maintain public order. Democratic opposition uh, in the Subrane forced Gorgiev to resign in 1928 before the royal dictatorship could be imposed. While martial law was lifted and democracy returned, it was only in the shadow of the authoritarian act. So-called People's Bloc of Radical Democrats, Democrats, and Rabatcha, France fell under the Grenzat Crisis of 1933. In response, the National Liberals and the People's Progressives formed a second liberal uh, concentration known as the Vasil Razulov's Liberal Coalition. Uh, achieved with the backing of the Crown Prince, this coalition has a failed domestic and foreign policy. As 1936 again, their delegated Prime Minister Petros Stainov 
Must decide, Bulky. Are you future? Hello, welcome from Edinburgh. You need some more rubber. We could get some more tungsten as well, but I don't know if it's really super necessary. I'm just gonna double check that the chat is actually working on stream. It is okay. Fantastic. I was worried that this wasn't actually showing up properly. Okay, so I'm taking control of Russia. Operation Nishvasha. As greater as Bulgaria was after the Vilna Creek, it was and still is not uniform. Almost half the population is made up of minorities. Turks, Greeks, Romanians, Albanians, and especially Serbs. The later have been a most problematic ever since the annexation of Skopje and Nish. During the Vilna Creek, Bulgarian forces did not hesitate to exterminate hundreds, if not thousands, and paved the way for the colonization of the new western provinces. While these measures were scaled down after the war, they never became soft. The harshest of territory integration depends on the government. Some sought Bulgarianization, others sought accommodation with the non-Bulgarians, even if that was despised by the radical far right. The liberal concentration came to power in 1933, and they banned any attempts at compromise. As advised by the Bulgarian army, they approved a mass operation against Serbian intellectuals and suspected separatists in Niche. Waving the State Protection Axe in her hands, soldiers commanded by General Hitzstrav Lukov arrested over 300 Serbian politicians, writers, and artists. Even three members of the Serbrane were detained, though the operation was expected to pacify the region for good, more and more harrowing stories came out from the Bulgarian prison and martial courts, the most public opinion turned away from the government. They can no longer stomach a return to the terror of the Vilkrieg years. I mean, it's only January 11th, so no, the faction not joined up quite yet. The street died? Oh, is it? Okay, well, let me just double check that. Okay, like, disconnected for like one second. Very strange, but it seems like it's fine now. Under the orders of the opposition, aligned with the Committee of Five, or the Petra, the Prime Minister's standoff was forced to step to the Sobrane podium for questioning, and had to defend himself for over an hour. Though he aimed to address many of the concerns as fellow parliamentarians as possible, he did not satisfy the agitated opposition, who were now out for blood, especially as several of the concentration's members were openly sympathetic. Buffering for a couple minutes? Not too sure why that would be. Um, this speech follows. Constantine Muriov, Fire ban for the former Ukrainian National Union and nephew of the infamous Alexander Stramboskli and General Ginov, one of the five constitutional titans who gave the name of the Petrovka and a longtime leader of the Radical Democratic Party, both of them announced the true culprit, the State Protection Act, who wielded by the absolutist Ferdinand and the son ever since the act's adoption under their puppet, General uh, Gorgiev. Conspiracy was developed between a dynasty and a liberal concentration. The plan was to transform the country into an authoritarian dictatorship. It's time for Sobrane to start fighting back. The expected that Bulgarian society is still in debate over Operation Nishava and the government's authoritarian powers. The Prakata will aim to push for the abolition of the act. The decision of Prime Minister Sandov will have to resist or support. Hello, Victor Sigma, which I'm pretty sure is Q Fab, if I'm not uh, mistaken. The, the Abolishment of State Protection Act. Could do that one. You actually just give us a free technology. That's actually really good. You don't usually see that too much. But we can no we can no longer do the real dictatorship anymore. Not right now. I guess we'll abolish the State Protection Act. Seems like a good uh way for us to start this off. Okay, we got fear mongering. Follow, it's gonna happen in 297 days. We have 27 days effects of Prince Popularity. In zero strength. 280 deputies of the Sobrane, 100 are in favor of abolishing the State Protection Act. If 200 more are in favor of abolishing the Act, they may honestly present a bill for its absolution. Or before not absolution, for its abolition. There are military circles plot in the shadows. We predict that if they, attempt to coup, if they were to attempt to coup today, it would likely fail. So we need more... Our, our plan is to form Yugoslavia. And I guess not get killed? Okay, no, this got this failed immediately. Excellent. If I work right, you will be dealing with a pension of the veterans, which is a horrible debuff. Excellent. No longer did the uh, bill to abolish the faction was proposed in the Sobrane. The, the parliamentary committee that designated to review the bills once again uh, has more or less killed it before it even reached the floor. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. We'll try again later. So I'm guessing we can try this event again, maybe if later? I guess we'll just the military then. That's going to take 42 days. And it gives us free technology. Now, I'm always, always happy to have a free technology. Draw some units up like this. Oh, it is showing up two sides of the screen at once. Help! Wait, 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 wait.
There we go. I fixed it. I fixed the problem. We, we did it. Also, what, what? I didn't realize I had it on there twice. Uh, Moriev reaches out. From my beginning, they drawn in um, both an in and out of parliament. And the greatest prize is whether the party could claim it, it is the prime minister to the state of. And he has put forward as a controllable pawn, a jurist, and diplomat with a long parliamentary career. A little experience in the highest levels of government and the independent. Or an independent who could satisfy both liberal concentration and moderate opposition members. Since then, however, the line has more or less has been more and more fluid, and those who know him well know that if the push comes to shove, he will work with those he believes will save Bulgaria. With his knowledge in hand, Konstantin Moriev has reached out to the Prime Minister directly, offering Stan to have a private meeting at one of the restaurants in Sofia Tsar Azerbaijan Boulevard. The two politicians would be able to discreetly discuss the matters of the day. Always straightforward, Miriav laid off the position clearly. Ever since the adoption of the Constitution of Tarnovo, the Tsardom has claimed more and more freedom and power in their hands, adding it to the positions. Already, Bulgaria has hardly been called a democratic state, a shameful fall from grace for a country that's so proud that's on one of the first democratic constitutions in the Balkans. Now, this may sound great to a man who is serving as Tsardom's own prime minister, or as Moria points out, it is being the puppet of un an, un an unhinged autocrat, really what he wished to be known in the history books. It's not morally right for anyone who believes in democracy to stand up and say, we've had enough. We can curtail the monarchy. I'm going to stand against the State Protection Act. Black Monday in Bulgaria? You've got like two days until Black Monday hits Bulgaria. Afghanistan's at war with India. We can stand with either the monarchists, the Democrats, or the military. I'm guessing we're leaning more towards the Democrats. We can gather supporters. Right now we have 90. And we need 200. I think. Gather supporters. Uh, we, have, we have 30 political power. Fear mongering gets you. Daniel Vos gains strength. I guess we'll, well, let's let's gather some supporters. That seems like a good thing for us to start off now. Do the monarchy or the military? I think I've already screwed that one up. Serbian Democrats win local niche elections. Inky Serbians. Don't try to break away from, from Bulgaria. New local elections have been held across the Bulgarian controlled niche region in the aftermath of Operation Java. As many former councillors and several mayors were arrested on the suspicion of collusion with the go government of Belgrade, in spite of the opposition, in, 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 ta in spite of the opposition, touch, however, the overwhelmingly Serbian population of the region had not yielded the pressure. And local elections have revealed even greater turnout in favor of the Serb Democratic Party, which has gained over 54% of the vote. Yes, he has an uh, elected party uh, in part of the Progressive Republican Party, owing to the affiliation with the ruling Republican Party in Serbia. While at the same time heavily nationalist, venomously separatist, and anti-Bulgarian, because the former, they support the progressive elements of the Subrane and stand in favor of abolition and up in favor of abolishing the State Protection Act. But because of the latter, their inclusion in the pro-constitution coalition has been protested by many Bulgarian deputies. We get more people in support of us. You lose a little bit of stability. I don't know. I'm, I'm guessing we're probably not going to overthrow the monarchy, at least not on purpose. Okay, Black Money hit Germany. How is that penalty for us? That's actually incredibly, incredibly generous. Only a negative 10% stability in factory output. That's like basically not even a debuff for Black Monday. Like compared to like some of the other ones. Like I think Lithuania gets absolutely destroyed by it, right? Yeah, they have a worse time. Germany obviously doesn't do very, very well. I mean, I guess the German-Bulgarian relations did kind of decrease after the Wielkrieg. So, I guess it kind of makes a little bit of sense that maybe our economies aren't completely interlinked with the Germans, but... Still. Push away towards Athens. We do need more troops, but our manpower is also shit. Um, so we've got two, we've got two problems there. We need more men, we have no manpower. Um, I guess that's actually kind of the same problem. Um, do we have any artillery? 42 artillery. How many artillery do you need? You need 684. Let's go like one of you, two of you, at least for right now. And let's try to slowly train up troops. Are you going to make your own faction? If we can, I know there's a faction that Bulgaria can make. Yeah, we're going to gather some supporters. 
We got 110 people in our favor. And again, we needed 200. I read somewhere in here that we needed 200. Okay, now black money is getting worse. Okay, fair enough. Bank runs in Ger the bank runs in Germany in the aftermath of the Black Monday crash of Rishal Fia, fearing that something alike will happen, that what happened in Berlin will, happen, will repeat here. If that's what the normal civilians alike have begun rapidly withdrawing their deposits in one of the largest commercial banks in Bulgaria, the, B the Bukoli Brothers. Run by the aforementioned family, Bukoli rapidly expanded credit during the 1930s, riding off the wave of economic miracle in Germany while, other while offering loans to more and more untrusty debtors. This may not have been an issue a few years ago, as the profits in their operation would be more than worth the risk, but now the overconfidence has bitten them back. Millions of leve in loans are expected to never return to the bank. Its own debts mount by the day. The class of the bank is imminent, but likely it is the class of Bulgarian's financial systems. It falls upon the Bulgarian State Bank and a uh, dictatorate of the state guaranteed debts to figure out a solution. To them, the only way to minimize losses is to forcibly merge the Bukave with another major bank. And now we've got to save a bank. Which is, we gotta save you. And if we don't save you, the, mi the military is gonna take action. Which seems like a bad thing to do. Bulgaria plus Macedonia is the greater Bulgaria. There's your faction. There we can gather more supporters. I'm guessing we probably have some Black Monday focuses finished. Or at least available to us. Um, curtail the military, they'll still take- You may still take this focus five times. Okay. I'm- that's actually interesting. I don't think I've ever seen a focus where you can re where you can repeat it. Yeah, there's been a push in, uh, White Ruthenia. And White Black Honey, 20 deputies will now stand against the abolition of the act. And curtail the military strength. Serbia does not have a national spirit. I guess we'll go with passive deposit protection laws. Are we going to ally with Germany? Again, again, we'll see. We'll see how we um. We'll see what happens, right? Because we need to reject Austrian and German help in the war against Serbia if we want to form Yugoslavia. I don't know why that's the option, but as far as I know, that's part of the requirements of forming Yugoslavia is that you can't get Austrian nor German help. So I'll try to avoid getting Austrian and German help. That might force us to not be able to join our faction. We'll see. I mean, I, I hope not. But I can't guarantee it. How, are, how is everybody doing in chat today? National Legionnaires grow in strength. The Union of Bulgarian National Legions are the most recent incarnation in the long history of nationalist Bulgarian imperial militaries. Born the vast amount of res reservationists, military advancements who were left on the street after the Vilkrieg, found a way to channel their frustration. First, they founded uh, the youth wing of Rona Sahita. The National uh, Legion swiftly overtook their fathers and consolidated themselves as the leading force of the Bulgarian far right. Vehemently nationalist, anti capitalist, and anti Semitic, they're clearly inspired by the same uh, name regime in Romania. You know, they recognize that they are Bulgaria's biggest enemy. That solution across Bulgaria following the Black Monday crisis empowered the legions. Not only that, as their leader Ivan Docet and other legionnaires took advantage of the crisis, organizing massive rural relief aid actions, aid the peasantry in their hours of need. Thousands of legionnaires have marched into the countryside, aiding the peasants in their harvest and propagandizing their ideals along the way. At the moment, the legionnaires are an ally of Zeno. However, this alliance is brittle, and it's no mystery that the radicalization of young officers have their own agenda. Great, you love the YouTube stream? I mean, it's kind of like a... Um, I guess a test, and we'll, we'll see how. I mean, even though it's you know 10 p.m., it's kind of a it's kind of a biased test against us. Next time we stream, uh, which I'm guessing will probably be Saturday, because Friday I have class and it's at a very weird uh, time that I can't really stream on. So Saturday we'll, we'll we'll do another stream for sure, and we'll see. It'll be a little bit more of a fair shot there. Ban of the Dobrin Iron Guard. Bulgarian State Protection Act has claimed another victim. The Dobrin chapter of the Legion of Archangel Michael, more commonly known as the Iron Guard. It was founded in 1933 and received a head start with donations of hundreds of thousands of lev by the engineer Virgil Ayanatsu, which even earned him a promotion to lead the first branch of the Constanta and then all across the Dobriga. Uh, though it was officially declared itself to be a branch of the party in Bucharest, in practice it autonomous due to the difficulty of controlling this branch behind the tense Bulgarian-Romanian border. 
Economy is led the Dominion Iron Guard, working alongside local military uh, Romanian parties on the premise that all Romanians must work together. Unlike the PNR in Transylvania, an awkward situation considering the Iron Guard's stance towards the old pair military parties in mainland Romania. Second organization's collusion of foreign elements, venomously anti-Bulgarian rhetoric, and are plotting against the security of the Bulgarian state. The authorities have finally dissolved it. Its headquarters in Constanta have been raided by police. Several of its leaders, including Ainetsu himself, was arrested. And his property it was seized. The man was went by with elting of criticism from the Bulgarian parliament. Met with protests along the Mar eh, Met with protests among the Romanian minority in Dobrogina. I want to do more fear mongering, but I don't really political power. It's gonna take another day for that. Vince Gang was about the royal family. Factions of Crown Prince Borans were worsen. Yeah, the royal the royal family, they've been doing some some wacky shenanigans. Wacky shenanigans that the, that the uh Bulgarian people cannot accept. I can't remember, like, where is this in here? Congress of Belgrade, it just has to be after the election in 1936. And the Serbian elections in October, so like if we're in an awkward situation where like the war could start way, way, way sooner than I would like. Like a power. You know, we'll gain strength. Five percent stability. We got a free factory out of this. I mean, let's see. Likely fail. We have ninety-five. I think not great. And for you, we need to force BPD to absorb company. Which is this. Okay, let's do that so we, uh... At least one of those uh, tasks that we have right now, we don't fail. And not failing, I would say... That's pretty good. It's pretty good not to fail. Yeah, Afghanistan has lost their war. I'm assuming they're just neutral. Um, the Entente rarely actually puppets them. Yeah, no, there, there's a neutral nation. Okay, Republican Revolution in Iran. The Social Democratic, nothing too crazy there. You guys are national populist. Other than that, I don't think anything too crazy has happened uh, across the world quite yet. Nothing that's at least unexpected, I would say. You know that Russia is not going to go national populist. Um, I think this guy here in Russia can, as soon as it's unloading in, um, I'm pretty sure this guy can declare himself to be the Tsar. We'll see exactly when that happens. And again, aside from that, nothing too crazy. Maybe Middle Africa might explode, but it's still a little bit too early to tell. Okay, we gotta save you 30 days. I believe our focus is done in oh, it's done in six days. So that 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 mission's done. Don't need to worry about that at all. Which is nice. It's nice to not have to worry about one thing. If we do this, we um we can lower the chance of we can we can start getting rid of Black Monday. Abolish the act. I mean, I get 95 out of 280. I mean, it's not those aren't great numbers. Do all three of them? Yeah, there we go. Follow it up with let's curtail the debt directorate. That seems like it could be good. And honestly, even though these guys are very, very, you know, poorly trained and equipped, I still kind of want them on the front lines more than anything. Actually, we only, we only need two here. Actually, no, we do need three. There's three provinces here. Like, let's get these guys all on. You got, like, no equipment, but that's okay for right now. And once they take Thessalonica, we can move these units around to another front line if we have to. And I'm going to take a guess and say that we are going to have to. You're fighting it most, uh, uh, fighting it still. Do we have any claims? I don't think, I don't think we have any claims directly. Other than maybe Thessalonica? No. At least not right now. We might get claims on them in the future. Uh, once we actually win the war. Get these two attacks up and running. Crown Prince is losing his grip over the country. That seems good. It seems that it's good that he's losing his grip on the country. Army generals enforce the SBNL, which is the 
national populist, okay. Radical nationalist goals of the National League, though hardly palatable uh, to the average Bulgarian, is caught attention to the army's highest ranking officers. Went to the organization's history in contact with other right wing Bulgarian paramilitaries, you can easily find support among the officer corps. Two notable generals are now spoken up in their favor. Nikolai Zikov, hero of the first Balkan War in the Wild Creek, was the first to do so, writing favorably the legionnaires. This piece published in the military union's official, unofficial, you know, official newspaper, Scrav. Scrav now is an ambitious uh, auto. Otto Chitonius? Movement whose ideas may have a lot a uh, lot of use in Bulgaria of today. The Sons advocate of pro-German course, Zekov has found a uh, considerable common ground with the movement there. Of course, the old retired general is still somewhat hesitant because of his typical conservatism. Then our history of Lukov is, another, is a lot more decorated in his follow-up article, and rumors say that he is directly involved with the Legionnaires, even possibly considered to be an alternate leader. They ever seek to make themselves more presentable to the general population. All these commanders have greatly criticized the current regime, of course, almost to the point of shunning democracy entirely. Rumors are abound of the legionnaires' march on Sofia as a signal of the military coup to overthrow the government of Petrosyanov and establish a hardline authoritarian regime, whether or not they can find an ally in the highest office. They can stage a coup, or they can gain strength. We're going to lose some political power off this. Um, so now they lean somewhat towards success in the military coup. And we don't want to be cooed. I don't think we want to be cooed. I'm pretty sure we want to at least be monarchist or, or democratic in order to form Yugoslavia. I might be wrong on that. I might be wrong on that. But we'll see. We might need to curtail the military league. Once this is done, we might need to do this. And we can do it up to five times. Doctrine bonus, 5% super factory... Military factory donations plus three. I'm not really actually too sure exactly what that does. It might just give us three free civilian factories. Perhaps? Grand Prince is not gathering much attention every three days. Now it's going to likely succeed. That seems very bad from the before where it was just, it was not going to happen. Yeah, I'm assuming maybe if the Serbians start to plot against us, we're probably maybe going to be more likely to, uh, War of the Artist. When the State Protection Act was adopted, it was not merely the minority communities or underground socialists who suffer. Free speech has been curtailed and Bulgarian literature has struggled since. While the Republican Revolution in Serbia had led to the explosive revival of avant-garde art and literature such as the Zenius movement, the Bulgarian literature has increasingly struggled to breathe. The government of Konstantin Grigov, as well as the sub 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 <laughs> Subsequent governments look down on symbolist, expressionist, or even unique diabolist currents. And instead cooperate with the Zetrog magazine edited by Vladimir Vazlev, who is much more cooperative with creeping authoritarianism. The Bulgarian literacy community has endorsed the design of Petkoka, joining the campaign against State Protection Act and against the censorship of literature. Um, I've lost where I was reading. Uh, the poet, the journalist, translator, Guillaume Muliev, stands at the forefront of the literary movement. We level the socialist in his youth, dedicating poems to the French Revolution and the struggles of Bulgarian communists. We matured and moderated over time. Still, however, he is no progressive in support of the broad socialists. The Pekorad's campaign against the act has revived one of Muliev's prose of 1926 in challenge, in which he challenges the still rather recent act. We feel to suffocate a proud consciousness, the voice that cries out, the eternal truth that lives forever. Everyone discovered a single axe. Today's rulers invented the Straight Protection Act. Kill everything that cannot die. 